Hi guys, today I'm going to be making a candle out of this thing. I've seen these all over Instagram. I designed this just in Fusion 360. Pretty simple uh, design. I 3D printed it. And yeah, I'm going to just make a quick uh, sort of mold enclosure for it that we can go ahead and pour some silicon rubber into to create our mold. You can sort of always over engineer these mold boxes, but today I'm just going to be making it out of this, this sort of plastic core flute board. Uh, I think I got this at Bunnings. You know, they make signs out of them and stuff like that. I'm just going to be using it today to make the mold box just because it's cheap and because it's plastic it means when we pour the silicon rubber into it, it will not sort of soak in like if we were to use like a cardboard or something like that. So yeah, I would just go ahead and cut out some panels. First things first is we've got to measure this. So this piece is about 12 centimeters by four and a half by 16. We want it quite chunky outside for this just because when we pour the wax into the mold, we don't want it to sort of expand out. So we need quite a, quite a bit of uh, material on the outside in order to sort of hold our shape. I'll make it 10 by 16 by like 17. If we don't need a ton on, on the top, yeah, I kind of want it quite chunky around these sides just to sort of support the wax when we pour it in there. I'll cut this out now. All right, so we've got all the pieces that we need and some cuts in the table. Let's get to taping them together. So, if you can see what we're going for there, it should sit in there like that. I'll just go around now and tape up the whole thing, uh, make it a lot more sealed. Okay, so we've got our mold enclosure here done. I've thoroughly taped it and fairly confident that we won't get any major leaks. So it's now time to pour our mold. On the actual piece, I've got uh, some double-sided tape. You can either use double-sided tape or glue it down. It can actually just like float up, which you don't want. So, so I usually just go with some double-sided tape on the bottom. It's not always necessary to use uh, a release agent. But because this is such a deep mold and it's so sort of long, it, it'll be quite hard to remove. So I'm just going to use a light coating. I've just got some Vaseline here and a paintbrush. And I'm just going to lightly coat this whole thing. Vaseline is a pretty good option for release agents. There are some sort of more specific products and brands and, and they work just as well and even better sometimes. But you know, Vaseline, it's available everywhere. Pretty cheap. Um, there are some spray on ones that can make it a little bit easier. We've got time today. I'm gonna paint this on, just a thin coat. That's why we heat it up. I think I've got a nice sort of general coating there. So now I'll just place it in the middle of our molding box. Push it down, make sure it's in there. And now for the silicone. I'm gonna go in with our 20A. Uh, this is the quick setting silicone that we have. This one you have to be fast with. It, so it, it has a mixing time of sort of five to seven minutes and it sets up in about 30 minutes. In terms of how much we're actually gonna need. So generally the way to go about this is you wanna get the volume of the whole sort of mold enclosure and kind of minus out your estimate of what the volume of the object is that you're trying to mold on the inside. Open up our calculator. Uh, we've got 15.5 by nine by 17. So that would be, that's about 2,300 uh, cubic centimeters. And we know that our actual piece on the inside is 4.5 by, I'm gonna say 12 by, I think it was 16 tall. So it's about 860 cubic centimeters. Of course, we've got the arch. We'll need a bit more of the actual silicon rubber. I'm gonna say, so that would leave us at about one and a half kilograms, but I'm gonna add a bit more just to make up for this arch and give us a little bit more to work with. So I'm gonna go for about 1.8 kilograms. That should do. So I'll go 900 grams of the A or thereabouts and 900 grams of the B. So we'll go in with the A first. Pretty much empty this bottle. I've got another bottle. All right, I'm at 900 exactly. It's always nice when you get it exact. But now I'm gonna go in with 900 of the part B. And this is where everything needs to, we need to move fairly quickly now because once it starts, we've gotta start mixing and get it poured in the next sort of five minutes. So I'm gonna go in with the B. Okay, that bottle had about 800 grams in it. 
All right, I got it at eight, nine, 899.8. This is a very full bowl. I probably should have gotten a bigger bowl, but we'll make it work. I'm gonna also color it just with a bit of our pink pigment because it's new and it looks cool. With this stuff, you only need a very small amount. So I'll go in with about, what's that, a large pea. And yeah, we'll start mixing. Try and scrape all of the sides of the bowl. Make sure you incorporate all of the A and B and there's no leftover bits that haven't been mixed. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, you can use a vacuum chamber to suck all the air bubbles out. Uh, with the 20A, it's got a fairly, fairly low viscosity. The bubbles aren't too much of an issue. They do kind of come out. And I'll show you also how to sort of just a technique thing on how you can kind of avoid some of the bubbles. So uh, yeah, when we go to actually pour, what we want to do is pour in sort of a thin, long stream um, away from the main piece to pull out any of the larger bubbles, which are the ones that sort of cause issues. Pour it in now in a sort of nice thin stream. And I can see the larger bubbles are getting popped on the way sort of down. I didn't make enough, but that happens sometimes. Uh, just checking the mold. We don't have any sort of major leaks. There's some bits where it's kind of coming through a little bit, but it's not, it's not gushing out over the table or anything. Yeah, that can be a bit of a disaster if that happens. And you want to watch when you start pouring it in as well. If you do have a leak, obviously stop. It can be a bit of a disaster, but you might have time to tape it back up and finish the pour. I think we're probably going to need another sort of maybe 100, 200 grams. So I'm just going to pour that in now. I've actually got some purple pigment here as well, so I might use that. All right, so there we go. It's covering the uh, top of the, the mold there. And yeah, we'll let this sit for, you know, 20 minutes. And I'll come back once it is all cured. Oh yeah, another quick thing uh, about the hardness. We use the 20A today. So yeah, for candles, the 20A, 15A is generally a good range to be in. You don't want to go too hard or else it becomes sort of too... Uh, hard to get your final product out and you don't want to go too soft or else once you pour the wax in it can kind of just deform and lose shape. The 20A or even the 30A and the 15A are generally sort of a good middle ground uh, depending on what sort of objects you're, you're making but you, generally that's where we recommend people start out. Okay so it's been about half an hour and we are yeah, we're pretty much set. So it's time to demold. Now to do this, I'm just gonna slice through the tape. Actually, I have a knife. You can see where it's kind of gotten inside of the actual plastic, but it's all right, it still worked. There we go. It kind of sticks to the table a little bit. Uh, but yeah, to demold this, peel back the edges. You can trim this little bit that gets in between the piece and the bottom. Because it's a candle, I'm not too bothered with how it looks, especially around the bottom. Because we use the release agent, it also makes it a little bit hard to grip. Just make sure that it's all separated on these sides. Yeah, there we go. Because we use the release agent, it's super easy. It just literally slides out. And yeah, we've got our, our mold in there. The next sort of step will be to just pop a hole in the bottom, um, just right in the middle for the candle wick to go. So I'll just make a kind of a nice hole. Here's the wick. This is just from a candle that I've melted down. But I'll basically just get this in that hole that I just made and poke it through the top. Got the wick poking through there. You generally want to probably do it the other way around, so the wicks is sitting on the bottom of the candle, but it was sort of the only way to mold this one because of the curvature of the top of the arch. So I'll basically just pull it through so that it kind of sticks out the top here, just enough for us to sort of, if I can, if I run a couple of skewers across, it'll just sort of hold it in place. Do that. That's pretty much ready to pour. So yeah, I've been melting the wax. I'll go grab that now. Um, of course, it's hot, so be careful when you do this. I'm gonna wear some nice leather gloves. But yeah, I got a wax here. Just melted that down using the double boiler method. Let's get pouring. Let's pour in our wax. So yeah, we'll just let that cool now. Uh, we don't wanna rush this, but I think generally with candles, you wanna let them sort of cool as slowly as possible 
to uh, stop any sort of expansion and contraction. All right, hey guys, we're back. We've got the candle all set now. Let's just go ahead and demold. So here we go. Got our candle. Looks all right. The bottom is a bit rough. I imagine I can heat that up maybe and just smooth it out, but there you go. We've captured most of the detail. I mean, it's not perfect. If you can see, there's a slight little concave around the wick, which actually probably works for the wick. And it, at the detail, we're probably not capturing all the detail. I think I poured the wax a little bit too hot. But yeah, I'll get some better wax supplies and we might remake this video, maybe with some different shapes. Hope you learned something about candle making and the general process on how you go from a 3D printed piece to a mold to a actual finished candle. Yeah. All right, thanks for watching. I hope you got something out of this. If you're interested in purchasing our silicon rubbers, uh, check out our website, sillycreate.com. And yeah, we'll be making more videos like this. If you've got anything you wanna see specifically, please let us know in the comments below. If you're watching this on YouTube, please subscribe. I guess I'll see you guys in the next one. I don't wanna start a fire.